In the heart of a quaint, fog-shrouded town, nestled between whispering forests and a restless sea, the tale of Evan unfolds. A freelance writer by trade, Evan's life was a mosaic of mundane routines and solitary nights, until an unseen, unsettling presence began to shadow his every step, turning his mundane existence into a chilling narrative of fear. Evan first noticed it on a windswept evening, while meandering through the labyrinthine alleyways back to his dimly lit apartment. A flicker of movement in the periphery of his vision, a whisper that danced with the wind, too coherent to be dismissed as the town's nocturnal murmurs. Initially, he chalked it up to the overactive imagination of a writer too engrossed in his horror manuscripts. Yet, the sensation of being watched grew more persistent. A gaze that clawed at the edges of his sanity, always just out of sight, but overwhelmingly present. The true horror unfolded when Evan caught a glimpse of his stalker for the first time. Under the sickly glow of a street lamp stood a figure cloaked in darkness, its features a macabre mirror of Evan's own, save for the eyes. Those were abyssal pools, void of life, yet brimming with malevolence. The doppelganger's voice, when it spoke, was a twisted echo of Evan's, filled with words he never uttered, promises he never made. From that night on, the line between reality and nightmare blurred. Evan's stalker was everywhere and nowhere, a specter that mimicked his appearance, but distorted his essence. It whispered to strangers, tainting Evan's reputation with deeds he never committed. Friends turned wary, their eyes clouded with unspoken accusations. Evan's sanctuary, his home, no longer offered solace, as the sounds of phantom footsteps and whispered threats filled the once tranquil silence. Desperate for answers, Evan delved into the town's lore, uncovering tales of an ancient, malevolent entity that fed on fear and confusion, capable of taking on the guise of its prey. The town folk spoke of it in hushed tones, a cautionary tale passed down through generations, yet none knew how to banish it. As Evan's world crumbled, the boundary between him and the entity began to fade. Was he being stalked by something that bore his face? Or was he slowly becoming the very thing he feared? The story reaches a crescendo when Evan decides to confront the entity. A showdown between man and nightmare on the cliffs overlooking the tempestuous sea. The confrontation is intense. A battle of wills where Evan faces not only the entity but also the darkest recesses of his own mind. The entity in Evan's voice taunts him with visions of his life being usurped. His identity erased replaced by this malevolent twin. As the narrative reaches its peak, the story abruptly halts, leaving readers teetering on the brink of revelation. Did Evan triumph over his spectral stalker? Or did he succumb to the darkness that mirrored him so closely? The line between reality and the supernatural remains, tantalizingly blurred, inviting readers to ponder the depths of their own fears and the shadows that might dwell within them. The tale of Evan and his eerie doppelganger remains unresolved, a chilling narrative suspended in the fog of uncertainty, awaiting the next chapter to unravel its enigmatic threads. In the eerie silence that followed Evan's confrontation with his otherworldly stalker, the chilling sea breeze
carried away the echoes of their standoff, leaving no trace but the unsettling calm that enveloped the cliffs. The town below lay shrouded in mist, its inhabitants unaware of the thin veil that separated their world from the unfathomable darkness that lurked at its fringes. Evan stood alone, the precipice before him, a stark reminder of the fine line between sanity and madness. The entity, with its familiar yet twisted visage, had vanished into the night, leaving behind a haunting silence that weighed heavily on Evan's soul. The encounter had not provided the answers he sought. Instead, it deepened the mystery, weaving more questions into the fabric of his reality. In the days that followed, the boundary between Evan's existence and the shadow that haunted him became increasingly porous. His reflections in mirrors began to lag, offering fleeting glimpses of expressions he did not feel whispers in his voice filled his apartment, crafting narratives he did not remember weaving. Paranoia became his constant companion, a relentless force that gnawed at the edges of his mind, blurring the lines between observer and observed. The town, once a quaint backdrop to his solitary life, now seemed to conspire with the unseen. Figures in the corner of his eye moved with an unnerving familiarity, their features obscured yet eerily reminiscent of his own. Conversations halted as he approached, leaving a palpable void filled with unspoken suspicions. Evan's reality was fracturing, the fragments reflecting a world that was both his and utterly alien. Compelled by a desperate need for answers, dwindling grasp on his own identity. Evan embarked on a journey into the heart of the forest that bordered the town. Legends spoke of ancient ruins hidden within, remnants of a forgotten civilization that had once made pacts with forces beyond human comprehension. It was there, amidst the towering trees and the oppressive silence that Evan hoped to find the key to unraveling the curse that bound him to his spectral doppelganger. As night descended, the forest came alive with whispered secrets and the rustling of unseen entities. Shadows danced at the edge of Evan's torchlight, always just beyond reach, leading him deeper into the labyrinthine woods. Time lost meaning in this place that seemed untouched by the modern world, each step taking him further from the reality he knew. At the heart of the forest, shrouded in vines and the weight of centuries, lay the ruins Evan sought. Crumbling stones arranged in esoteric patterns spoke of rituals and powers that had once bridged worlds. It was here, amidst the echoes of ancient chants, that Evan found the altar a stone slab, worn smooth by time, inscribed with symbols that pulsed with an otherworldly glow in the moonlight. As he approached, the air grew thick, charged with an energy that whispered of thresholds meant to remain uncrossed. The forest held its breath, the silence, a foreboding prelude to the right that Evan felt compelled to complete. Drawing from the depths of his fraying sanity, he began to recite the incantations carved into the stone, each word a key unlocking doors best left sealed. The ritual's climax was a maelstrom of shadows and whispers, reality warping in waves around the ancient altar. Evan stood at the precipice of revelation, the veil between worlds thinning to a gossamer thread. And then, just as the boundary was about to be breached, 
the story breaks off, leaving Evan on the brink of an abyssal truth. His fate intertwined with forces beyond the ken of mortals. The narrative remains suspended in this moment of tension, the outcome hidden within the shadows that encroach upon the edge of the tale. Evan's journey into the heart of darkness pauses here, on the threshold of understanding, inviting the reader to ponder the nature of the entity and the fate of a man caught in a web of his own making with the promise of more to come. As the ritual reached its zenith, the air around Evan crackled with a power that threatened to consume not just the clearing, but the very fabric of reality itself. The ancient symbols on the altar glowed with an ethereal light, their arcane energy enveloping Evan in a vortex of whispers and shadows. The boundary between the worlds grew thinner, so fragile that it seemed the slightest breath could shatter it, unleashing the unknown. In this suspended moment, where time and space lost all meaning, Evan found himself caught in the eye of a metaphysical storm. The whispers coalesced into a voice, or perhaps many voices speaking in unison, a chorus of echoes from beyond the veil. They spoke in riddles and half-truths, revealing glimpses of ancient pacts and the price of forgotten knowledge. Evan, driven by a mix of fear and an insatiable desire for answers, pushed forward with the incantation. His voice steady even as the world around him spiraled into chaos. The forest, once merely a silent observer, seemed to lean in, its ancient trees bending towards the clearing, as if drawn by the ritual's promise of revelation. Just as the final words left Evan's lips, a sudden, deafening silence fell upon the clearing. The shadows receded like the tide, leaving Evan standing alone before the now dim altar, the glow of the symbols fading like the last embers of a dying fire. The oppressive presence that had accompanied him since the encounter with his doppelganger seemed to wane, though whether it was banished or merely retreated into the depths of the forest remained unclear. Evan, his heart racing with a cocktail of relief and lingering dread, scanned the clearing, half expecting his spectral stalker to emerge from the shadows. But there was nothing only the whispering leaves and the distant call of nocturnal creatures. The eerie sense of being watched had dissipated, replaced by a profound solitude that bordered on desolation. As he turned to leave, 
a sense of unease rooted itself in the pit of his stomach. The ritual had been completed, but the sense of resolution Evan had hoped for eluded him. Questions remained, festering in the back of his mind like wounds that refused to heal. Had he truly banished the entity? Or had he merely opened a door to a realm best left unexplored? The journey back through the forest felt longer than before, each step heavy with the weight of uncertainties. The familiar path seemed to twist and turn in unfamiliar ways, as if the forest itself had shifted in the wake of the ritual. Evan's thoughts churned with possibilities, the seeds of doubt sprouting tangled theories about the nature of his stalker and the consequences of his actions. Upon returning to the edge of the forest, where the trees gave way to the cobblestone streets of the town, Evan paused, casting a final glance back into the shadowy depths. The sensation of being watched had not returned. The feeling of unease persisted, a constant reminder that some doors, once opened, can never be fully closed. The story leaves Evan at the boundary between the known and the unknown, the resolution of his haunting ordeal hanging in the balance, the nature of the entity that mirrored him, and the true impact of the ritual in the ancient clearing remain shrouded in mystery, inviting speculation and anticipation of what twists and revelations the future might hold. The narrative thread dangles, poised to unravel further into the darkness that lies just beyond the edge of the light. Evan's return to the town was marked by a palpable shift in the atmosphere. The fog that had perennially shrouded the streets seemed denser, clinging to the cobblestones with an almost predatory hunger. The townsfolk, too, appeared changed. Their glances were sharper, more calculating, as if they could sense the invisible mark the forest had left on him. In the days that followed, Evan's life attained a veneer of normalcy, but the undercurrents of his recent ordeal pulsed just beneath the surface. Sleep, when it came, brought no relief. Filled with vivid dreams of shadowy forests and altars that bled darkness. By day, he found his steps invariably leading him towards the forest's edge, as though drawn by an invisible thread, compelled by a force he neither understood nor could resist. Evan began to research the town's history with a newfound fervor. He delved into dusty tomes and forgotten archives, uncovering tales of old that spoke of the forest not merely as a place of ancient ruins, but as a living entity, a guardian of the threshold between worlds. These stories whispered of rituals and sacrifices, of bargains struck in desperation, and of the thin veil that separated the mundane from the malign. As autumn bled into winter, the boundary between Evan's reality and the realm of nightmares continued to fray. Objects in his home seemed to move of their own accord, and his own reflection began to unnerve him, betraying subtle, inexplicable changes. The townsfolk, too, grew increasingly distant their behavior erratic, as if they were actors in a play they neither understood nor controlled. The culmination of these disturbances occurred one frost-bitten evening, when Evan, drawn once more to the forest's edge, witnessed a phenomenon that defied explanation. The trees, bare and gnarled, appeared to twist and writhe under the light of the full moon, their shadows dancing on the ground in a grotesque parody of life. And there, 
in the heart of this macabre spectacle stood a figure, or perhaps a reflection of one mirroring Evan's every move, yet imbued with an otherness that chilled him to the core. This doppelganger, devoid of the malevolent aura of his previous stalker, seemed bound to the forest, its movements constrained by some unseen boundary. As Evan watched, a chilling realization dawned upon him. The ritual had not banished the entity, but had instead bound it to the forest, transforming it into a sentinel of the threshold it once freely crossed. Haunted by this revelation, Evan understood that his actions had irrevocably altered the balance between the worlds, the consequences of which were yet to fully unfold. The town, and indeed Evan himself, now existed in a liminal space, caught in the tension between the known and the unknowable. As the story pauses, Evan stands on the precipice of this new reality the weight of his choices bearing down on him. The forest, with its newly appointed guardian, looms large, a constant reminder of the thin veil that separates the mundane from the monstrous. The narrative thread lingers in this moment of uneasy equilibrium. The path ahead, shrouded in the mists of uncertainty, beckoning the reader to ponder what lies beyond the veil. With the realization of the consequences of his ritual, Evan's life became intertwined with the enigmatic forest and its newly bound sentinel. The town, caught in the ripple of this unseen transformation, seemed to warp around the edges, its reality bending ever so slightly under the weight of the unseen forces at play. Evan found himself increasingly isolated, the townsfolk's behavior growing more erratic and distant, as if the town itself was slowly succumbing to the influence of the forest's threshold. Whispers of disappearances began to seep through the cracks of hushed conversations, and Evan couldn't shake the feeling he had altered was now slowly encroaching upon the town, driven by a mix of guilt and a desperate need to rectify his mistake. Evan began to venture into the forest more frequently, seeking answers and a possible way to reverse the ritual. The forest, alive with the eerie sentinel's presence, seemed to watch him its once hostile intent now replaced with a curious, almost protective gaze. One chilling night, under a sky veiled by the new moon's shadow, Evan stumbled upon a clearing he had never seen before, where the veil between worlds felt almost non-existent. The air here was thick with a potent energy, the ground littered with ancient stones that pulsed with a faint, otherworldly light. In the center of this clearing stood an obelisk, its surface etched with symbols that resonated with the ones on the altar where he had performed the ritual. Drawn to it, Evan placed his hands upon the cold stone, and a flood of visions assaulted him glimpses of the forest's ancient past, of rituals performed by those who had once revered these lands, and of the catastrophic events that led to the sealing of the threshold.
these visions offered a sliver of hope, hinting at a counter-ritual that could restore the balance he had disrupted. But the knowledge came with a warning. The path to redemption was fraught with peril, for the forces that guarded the threshold were not easily swayed, and the price of failure was a fate far worse than any earthly torment. As Evan withdrew his hands from the obelisk, the visions faded, leaving him with a heavy burden of knowledge and a daunting task ahead. The forest, once a place of dread, now held the key to salvation. Not just for Evan, but for the entire town teetering on the brink of the abyss. With the sentinel watching from the shadows, neither ally nor enemy, Evan prepared to walk a path fraught with ancient magics and unfathomable risks. The story lingers here, on the eve of Evan's journey into the unknown. The outcome of his quest hanging in the balance. A tantalizing thread waiting to be pulled in the tapestry of this dark, and unfolding narrative. Armed with the cryptic knowledge gleaned from the obelisk and the haunting visions of ancient rites, Evan embarked on a quest fraught with uncertainty and danger. The forest, now a realm of twisted shadows and whispered secrets, seemed to guide him. Its once malevolent sentinel, now a silent in the moonlit gloom. As Evan delved deeper into the heart of the woods, the line between the physical world and the realm beyond continued to blur. Trees twisted into grotesque shapes, their branches clawing at the sky like desperate hands. And the air was thick with a palpable energy that seemed to pulse with the very heartbeat of the forest. Each step took him closer to the heart of the mystery, to a place where the veil was thinnest and the forces that lay beyond it most volatile. Here, amidst ancient ruins overgrown with moss and ivy, stood an altar older than memory, its surface scarred by time and the dark rituals it had borne witness to. Evan knew this was the place where the counter-ritual must be performed. A delicate operation that would require not only the precise recitation of ancient incantations, but also a sacrifice, the nature of which remained shrouded in the enigmatic whispers of the forest. As the night deepened, Evan began the ritual his voice echoing through the stillness of the woods, intertwining with the ethereal whispers that seemed to emanate from the very air itself. The symbols on the altar glowed with a ghostly light, casting eerie shadows that danced and twisted around him. But as the ritual reached its climax, an unforeseen presence stirred in the darkness. A malignant force awakened by the disturbances in the delicate fabric of the threshold. The forest convulsed, a low, ominous rumble that seemed to emanate from the very depths of the earth. Evan, caught in the maelstrom of unleashed energies, felt the veil tearing, not sealing, as if his actions had inadvertently widened the breach. Shadows coalesced into tangible forms, nightmarish entities that slipped through the widening gap, their forms too eldritch for the human mind to comprehend. In this moment of chaos, the sentinel, the mirrored entity bound to the forest's edge, stepped forth from the shadows, its intentions inscrutable, its presence once a source of dread held a semblance of familiarity, a 
beacon of constancy in the swirling madness. The story pauses here, on the brink of cataclysm, with Evan surrounded by forces beyond understanding. The outcome of his ritual uncertain. The sentinel stands as a silent witness to the unfolding chaos, its role in the events yet to be revealed. The narrative thread hangs suspended in the eye of the storm, inviting speculation and anticipation of the mysteries that lie in the heart of the forest, and the fate of a man caught between worlds. As the fabric of reality tore around him, Evan realized the gravity of his miscalculation. The ritual, meant to mend, had instead opened the floodgates to chaos. The forest, alive with the dark energy of the entities, now freed from their ancient prison, writhed in a symphony of nightmares made manifest. In this moment of despair, Evan understood the true nature of the Sentinel. It was not merely a shadow of his own making, but a guardian, bound to the threshold to prevent the very cataclysm he had now unleashed. The entity, mirroring Evan's form, stepped forward, its eyes no longer voids of malice, but wellsprings of sorrow and resignation. With a clarity born of desperation, Evan saw the only path left to him. The counter-ritual was not to mend the veil, but to reinforce the Guardian's chains, to offer himself as a new sentinel, a keeper of the boundary between worlds. It was a sacrifice that would bind his essence to the forest, an eternal vigil in the shadow of the realm he had sought to protect. With the last of his resolve, Evan turned to the altar and spoke the final incantation, not to seal the breach, but to join the sentinel in its eternal watch. As the words left his lips, a blinding light enveloped the clearing. The energies unleashed by the ritual, coalescing into chains of ethereal light that bound him to the heart of the forest. As the light faded, entities, their passage into the world, halted by Evan's sacrifice, retreated into the shadows, their forms dissolving like mist in the morning sun. The forest stilled, the ominous rumble giving way to a haunting silence. Evan, now bound to the threshold, felt the weight of his new existence. His physical form faded leaving behind a spectral presence, a guardian of the boundary he had once sought to mend. The sentinel, its duty fulfilled, dissolved into the ether. Its watch ended with Evan's ascension. The town, unknowing of the sacrifice made at its edge, woke to a world unchanged, the veil intact, but forever guarded by a new sentinel. Whispers of the night's events faded into legend. The tale of a man who had become a ghost, a watcher in the woods. And so the story concludes, not with the banishment of darkness, but with the acceptance of the role it plays in the balance of the world. Evan's legacy is a cautionary tale a reminder of the thin line between hero and martyr, and the eternal watch kept at the edges of reality, where the light of our world meets the shadows of another. In the heart of the forest, the new sentinel stands guard, a silent protector against the terrors that lurk just beyond the veil forevermore.